Okay, so you follow the voice that told you to spread lies about your colleague. And that's exactly what you did. Now that the deed is done, and you're seeing that some of your other colleagues are believing you, and they are being aggressive towards that colleague whom you want to destroy, you're actually feeling funny on the inside. Somehow, you just don't have any peace. You know in your heart of hearts that what you did was wrong. You know that it was not okay to spread lies against your colleague just because you would like to have his or her position. And now, there is that voice telling you, you're such a terrible person. Why are you crying? Didn't you know that it was wrong to do that? You're such a mess. Forget about going for confession. God does not have time for your crap. You're such a pretender. You go to church every Sunday and you cannot be honest. You go around telling lies about people. On one hand, you're praying. On the other hand, you are killing. Don't you know that spreading rumors, spreading lies about somebody is a lie? You are such a mess. And now you are confused. You just don't know what to do. This brings us to the final way through which we can know that the enemy is talking to us or that the enemy is messing with us, which is the enemy is your accuser. Yes. At the start, he behaves as if he loves you. He wants you to do what makes you feel good. He wants you to do what fits your flesh. He will tell you, oh, come on. You're the one who deserves that position. That your colleague, I don't even know how he got there. If you get everyone on your side, you can tell some lies about him. Very soon they'll kick him out and you'll get his position. He makes as if he loves you. And then the moment you fall for his bait, the moment you do what he's asking you to do, he turns around and becomes your accuser. Come on, why are you such a pretender? Why are you crying? Didn't you know that it was wrong? My dear brother, my dear sister, the enemy does not love you. The enemy hates us. That is why the Bible tells us that the enemy comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But he will always behave as if he loves you because he knows that that's the only way he can get you on his side. And the moment he has gotten you on his side, he now turns and shows his real picture. He now becomes your worst enemy, your accuser. Imagine this scenario, maybe you've experienced it before. You know you've done something wrong. Yeah, maybe you've spread wrong, uh, you know, wrong information about your colleague or you've done some other terrible thing. You're not feeling bad, you're not regretting and you're thinking that you should go for confession. But somehow, you're finding reasons not to go for confession. For example, oh my God, I've been doing this thing for so long. How am I going to confess this same sin to father again? What is he going to think about me? Or you think, oh, but was it really a sin? Is it really a sin to say something about my colleague? Does any, am, I, am I the only one who does that? Everybody does that. You know, maybe I, I shouldn't even take it from, to confession. You know, God has more important things to do. Father has more important things to do. I don't need to disturb him. Or you think, um, maybe I should first of all rehearse my sins. I should first of all rehearse what I'm going to say so that I don't go and embarrass myself, so that I don't go and sit there and make a fool of myself. Okay, I'm going to go next week. Or you, you convince yourself, I, I'm going to confess. It is a sin, yes, but I'm going to tell, I'm going to confess it when there is a different priest, when I go to another church, where there's another priest who doesn't know me, then I'll confess. And finally, you miss the opportunity, you refuse to go for confession. My dear brother, my dear sister, who do you think is stopping you from going to the confessional? 
Of course, it's the enemy. Those voices in your head convincing you not to go, giving you good reasons why you should not go, they are from the enemy because he knows that the moment you get into conf the confessional, the moment you confess, you repent and confess, God is going to welcome you because that is who he is. He loves us. He will welcome us no matter what we have done. Remember the prodigal son? Remember the prodigal son, right? That is God. That is our heavenly father. That is how much he loves us. So the enemy will do everything to stop you from going to confession. In fact, he hates confession with a passion because he knows that the moment you go for confession, he has lost his grip on you and he can no longer mess with you. Oh, now you may be listening to me and you're thinking, but Laura, that is for Catholics. I'm not a Catholic. I don't confess to a priest. I go directly to God. Okay, my dear sister, my dear brother, I understand you. I hear you. Look at this other scenario. You've done something bad. Let's remain with the, you know, spreading bad news about your friend or about your colleague, right? And you're feeling bad about it. You're, you're regretting your actions. So you have prayed. You've prayed and you've, you've, you've told God everything. You've told God you're sorry. You've told God that you're not going to do it again and, and all of that. And you, you, you're convinced that God has forgiven you, right? Because God always forgives. He says that when we repent and come back to him, he'll always forgive us. So you, you know that God has forgiven you. But deep inside, there is still that unrest in you. You're just, you're just not at peace. There is still that, that, that sin is still hovering over your head like a cloud and it keeps bothering you then at some point you think that maybe you should talk about it with your pastor or maybe with your mentor or with an elder somebody who will give you good advice someone you trust someone you know will, 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 will be honest with you and tell you what to do but then you convince yourself again that no it is between me and God. I've already confessed and God has forgiven me. I'll be fine with time. So you keep on postponing it. There is another voice telling you to, to talk with, with your mentor, but you keep on postponing it. I will be fine. It's okay. I've already confessed to God. It's, it's between God and I. I will be fine. But someday you crash and you confess and you confess, right? You, tell, you talk to your mentor and tell your mentor everything that happened. So my question now is going to be, who do you think was stopping you from talking to your mentor? Of course, it's the enemy. Because what happens now that you've talked to your mentor? Your mentor will assure you that God loves you and that there is nothing you could ever do that will Will, will reduce God's love for you. So long as you you, 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 you you repent and come back home, like the prodigal son, now I'm coming home. So long as you come back home with a repentant heart, God is always there to forgive us, to cleanse us of all unrighteousness. But you always need someone to remind you because at that moment, the enemy is flooding your mind with all kinds of negativity. He is interested in, 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 in you know, in making you know how worthless you are, how terrible you are, what a pretender you are, what a mess you are. He keeps telling you that God could never forgive you, that God has no time for you. And he will do everything to prevent you from talking to somebody who could tell you the contrary, who could tell you the truth, that truth that sets us free, you know? So the enemy will do everything to stop you from confessing to someone else. The Bible says we should confess our sins to one another. Yes. So whether you're confessing to a priest or you're just talking to a friend or you're confessing to the person whom you hurt, you need to confess. You need to get it off your chest. So finally, you are free. You're, you, you, you know, that, that load, that stone is lifted off your chest. Finally, you make a way. You find a way to go for confession. And after, you feel so good that you beat yourself up for not going earlier. My dear brother, my dear sister, the enemy is the accuser of our souls. He wants to kill, to steal, and to destroy us. And he does everything he can do to keep us in bondage.
to keep us away from God's mercy. He does everything he can do to stop us from confessing our sins, from running to God. When we, he, 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 he deceives us to fall. And when we fall, he does everything to keep us on the floor, to keep us on the ground, to keep us in our mess. And he even convinces you to continue doing what you've been doing because after all, it's already too late. You've already fallen into the pit. In 1 Peter 5 verse 8, we are told that the enemy, that we should be sober and, and alert because the enemy, the accuser of our souls, is roaming around the earth like a roaring lion looking for who to devour. And his tricks are so many. But the, 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 the best of his tricks is he always tries to to bait you, to make it, to make whatever sin you're about to commit look so enticing. You remember what he told Eve, right? Eat of that fruit and you will become wise like God. You will not die. That is the enemy. So, one last thing. James 4 verse 7 tells us that we should submit to God. We should resist the enemy and he will flee from us. Resist the enemy and he'll flee from us. So how do you do that? The best way of res resisting the enemy is by standing strong, you know, saying no to all those temptations. When he tells you to flirt with your colleague, with your female colleague or your male colleague, you tell him no. I am married. Even if you're not married, you say no. I'm keeping my soul for that special person. When he tells you to fake your taxes, you tell him no. I pay my taxes. Things may be tough right now. I might have to pay a little more back to the state, but it is okay. I prefer to be honest. God will always take care of me. When he tells you to speak rudely to someone, you tell the person it's not worth it. Jesus Christ took so many insults for me. Why do I need to insult someone just because they treated me maybe unfairly? They might be having a bad day. And when he tells you to, what else? There is so much more. Whatever the enemy says, tell him no. Tell him God's grace is sufficient for me. Tell him, I don't need that. But I know it's difficult. I'm not saying it's easy. It's easier said than done, right? So sometimes we find that we fall and we do that thing which we do not want to do. But then when you've done it, don't allow him to keep you, to keep rubbing you in the mud. Get up and run to God. Confess your sins. Go for confession. Talk to a trusted friend. Confess. Ask for forgiveness to the person you've offended. And God's mercy will always be available for us. Resist the enemy and he will flee from you. So as we begin this new week, my dear brother, my dear sister, I pray that you will be able to recognize the voice of the enemy. The struggle is real. We are crowded. We are bombarded by so many voices telling us different things. But with a few basic principles which I've shared with you. If you missed the past editions, please just go back. You're going to see the series. There are two more videos, how to distinguish between God's voice and that of the enemy. And you can follow up with the other four points. So may God continue to bless us. May God continue to guide us. May God continue to lead us in everything. The struggle is real, but when we commit our lives to God, he will always guide us and he will always lead us on the right direction. Can you relate to any of the scenarios that I've mentioned? Can you think of a time when you did something, when you made a mistake and the enemy had a good time, you know, accusing you, condemning you, discouraging you? What happened? Did you finally go for confession? Did you finally talk to somebody? How did you feel after? What advice would you give to someone who has done something wrong and is struggling with the burden? What is your main takeaway from today's meditation? 
Do you have any question? Do you have any testimony? Do you have any inspiration to share with me? You know, my dear sister, I'll, my dear brother, I love to hear from you. I love to read your comments. I love when you ask me questions. I love when you share your experiences with me. I love when you tell me the things that you like to hear more. You'd like to hear me talk about more in the future. We're here to grow together. And also if I make a mistake, if I say something which you do not agree with, of course, I love to hear that because no one has all the answers. No one knows it all. We are here to learn. We are here to grow together. We're here to learn from each other. We're here to bless each other. The journey is a long one, but together we will make it to heaven, to eternity, which is our goal, right? In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Mighty God, ever living Father, I thank you for this day. I thank you, Father, for your grace which keeps me going day after day. I thank you, Father, because you always make a way where there seems to be no way. Thank you for forgiving me my sins, oh Lord. Thank you for loving me with an unconditional love. Father, today, Lord, you remind me that the enemy, my accuser, is always there and he's always so real and always so loud but that you're always there to be my advocate. You're always there to love me. You're always there to show me mercy. Heavenly Father, I pray that you give me that instinct, Lord. You give me that wisdom, Lord, to be able to discern between the, your voice and the voice of the enemy. Help me, Father. Show me ways through which I can flee. I can resist the enemy so that he will flee from me. And when I've fallen into temptation, when I've done something wrong, Father, may I, like the prodigal son, be quick to run to you and fall in your arms and receive your mercy and your forgiveness. I pray especially, and here you can mention a particular area of struggle. Mighty Father, we continue to pray for peace in this broken world. We continue to pray for justice. We continue to pray for love. We continue to pray for an end to the corona pandemic, which is making life difficult for all of us, Lord and the Father. Lord, we want to pray that you will heal the sick, that you will comfort the afflicted, that you will comfort those who are mourning, that you will raise the dead to eternal life, Father. We pray for our leaders, the leaders of the nations, as they make key decisions, Father, especially during this time of crisis, Lord, that you give them divine wisdom, Father, that whatever decisions they make, Lord, will be for the good of the people. Father, we just thank you, Lord, that you continue to make a way where there seems to be no way. Through Christ our Lord, we have prayed. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. All right. Thank you so much. If you've not subscribed to our channel yet, please go ahead and subscribe. Give us a like. Like this video. Share it if you enjoyed it, if you were inspired by it. And keep the fire burning. Hope to see you in the next edition. Bye-bye.